Okay, so in this video, what we're going to do is we're going to extend our analysis of our regression coefficients, and we're going to conduct uh, co build confidence intervals on those coefficients. Now we can do these from some of the data that we've already talked about that's in the data analysis tool pack, or we can just let the data analysis tool pack do some of this work for us. So let us calculate. Again, I'm going to replicate um, the uh, analysis that we did in a previous video. Oh, no, this actually should be this column. Now, what we want to pay attention to in this example is this confidence interval box. Now, by default, the data analysis tool pack is going to construct confidence intervals at the 95% confidence level range. Now, we, if we don't want the 95% confidence interval range, too bad. Uh, it's going to be there anyway. But normally, it actually calculates two of these sets of intervals. And what we can change is we can change the second one to be something that we want. So if we check the confidence level box here, we can then change the percentage. And just for the sake of argument, I'm going to change the confidence interval level here to 99%. You can change it to anything that you want in percentage form. And then I'm going to run our analysis again. And again, this will be similar to what we have seen in previous cases. And I'm just going to expand my column width a little bit so I can see everything. Now, this is part of the data analysis uh, output that we have not looked at previously, but we're going to pay attention to now. And that is in this section right here. These confidence intervals are calculated from the standard errors that are previously calculated here and the um, confidence levels that we've specified. So if we want to calculate the 95% confidence interval for our slope coefficient, we would use our t-test. The degrees of freedom would be n minus 2. So degrees of freedom is n minus 2. Because we're calculating two coefficients in our equation, we're calculating the intercept and the slope. And so in most of our simple linear regression problems, we will have these two coefficients that we're calculating. In a typical t confidence interval, we would use n minus 1 because we're only calculating the mean and doing an interval on that. But here we're calculating the intercept and the slope. And so that's n minus 2. So 31 observations in this example. So our degrees of freedom would be 29 in our, our t formula. We would calculate the multiplier. So t dot inverse dot 2t. For the 95% confidence interval, our alpha is 0 0.05, and our degrees of freedom in this case would be 29. We get our multiplier. And again, if we're doing this manually, we would take our margin of error, would be our t-score times the standard error for the coefficient whose inter, uh, confidence interval we're calculating. And then the lower bound and the upper bound of our confidence interval would then be the, the value of the coefficient minus the margin of error or the coefficient plus the margin of error. And we can see right here, those are in fact the values that are output in our table for the 95% confidence interval. 
That is how those are calculated. The 99% confidence interval, we would just change our T-score that we need our multiplier from uh, the 0.05, we would change this to 0.01, and then we would get a new margin of error and a new upper and lower bound. But this is, again, a, an interval on, based on the fact that we have this data, and there is some, there's some error, there's some residual, we only have so many values, blah, blah, blah. How much variability do we think there is in this value? Is it a little higher or a little lower? If we were to resample from this population, how much do we think that, how much wiggle room do we think there would be in those values if we re-estimated? Uh, same thing, the calculation for the, the slope intervals work exactly the same way. The only difference is that instead of using the standard error from the intercept, we would use the standard error from the slope. But everything would work the same way. The degrees of freedom is the same. We would get the same T multiplier. That would be exactly the same. Um, and then we would just get our 95% confidence interval the same way. Um, so the margin of error is our T score for the slope times the slope standard error. And then the lower bound would be the slope minus the margin of error. And the upper bound would be the slope plus the margin of error. And again, this is what we get exactly right here. These are the confidence intervals on the slopes. These are the confidence interval on the slope. And then the 99% confidence interval is here. And again, we can update this if we need other ones. We can do it manually, or we can let the data analysis tool pack do the calculate those confidence intervals for us.